Hello and welcome back to Read Topology Masters. In this video, I will show you how you can read topologize objects from CAD NURBS programs, such as Fusion 360, Modem Inspiration, Katya, Shaper 3D, and much, much more. I'd like to thank Autodesk for sponsoring this series of videos and helping me make more great content for you guys. All right, let's get started. So in the comment section of my videos, I got several things happening. If I use a polygon program such as 3ds Max, people tell me to use a NURBS program because it's much more powerful. If I use a NURBS program, people tell me that it's got bad topology so they won't be using it. You can never please everyone. However, in this video, guys, I'd like to try to offer a treaty and make both parties happy. So I'm going to show you guys the benefits and how you can work, go from NURBS to polygons. So the benefits of working in a CAD program is that you get to have very large fillets and very easy booleans as well, with very few problems. So in polygons, there's things that are very easy to make, they're difficult to do in CAD, and in CAD, there's easy things that are difficult to do with polygons. So I like to use a little bit of everything. So here I've got this, I'm using Shaper 3D, so I'm gonna double click on this, activate this icon right here, which allows us to copy on. If I just move this, we have a copy. All right. And then I can do that again, and we have another one. And then I can do that again, and we have another one. And so the reason for this is to show you how you can very easily and accidentally get nice results that are much more difficult when using polygons. So for example, if I select this and just do this large fillet bevel, you can see I've got this nice kind of volcano fillet. All right, that's one thing we can do. And then if I select that same edge on another object, I can then have, for example, a chamfer instead and get, for example, this right here. Give me another type of results. You can see how, for example, this little bump is different, giving us a different design, a different aesthetic. With this one, I'm also going to chamfer it, but I'm gonna go a little bit further and I'm gonna get this, for example. So now, just by that single operation on the single edge here, I've got these three different results, which can inspire me and go in different directions. We can even continue by filling this and we can go further and further with this. So as you can see guys, we can just get a lot of really interesting shapes very quickly here when using CAD NURBS. So that's why when it comes to very tight, sharp, hard surface models, I think everyone should try CAD at least once just to see what they can do with it. But the question is, what do we do after we bring this into a polygon program? It's not easily subdividable and it's probably gonna have lots of triangles as a result of the export process. Well, that's where we topology comes in handy. So I'm gonna go ahead and just press Control to select everything, and we're going to export this as an OBJ. Another option is to first export this to Moai 3D and then export that. However, in this situation, Shaper 3D gives us pretty good exports to OBJ, so we'll just skip that step. But just be aware, Moai has a very excellent export import feature as well. And if you wanna transform model into a CAD model, for example, you wanna transform polygons into CAD, then you want to use MOA as it has a very good solution for that. All right, and here are the objects. If we click on it to see what the polygon count here, you can see it's pretty low here. This is much higher because remember guys, now we have a curve. The big limitation about polygons is that once you have a curve and you have a lot more edges here and topology to establish that curve, you can see how it shoots up. Even though the objects are kind of similar in their complexity, you can see how this is much higher because of the curve. Pretty low, pretty low. In fact, these are actually the exact same number of polygons. Pretty low, and this one again will be high because of the curvature. All right, so let's go ahead and retopologize them. All right, let's go ahead and apply retopology. Let's lower this to, let's start with, let's say 500 and let's click on compute. 
As you can see, we get really awful results. Now, why is that? Let's reset. Well, it's because even though these objects look like they have smoothing groups, they actually don't. It's actually an illusion. Let's go to Edible Palette to find out what's really going on. So if we go into Polygon and simply scroll down here, let's click on this. You can see it's one. Okay. This looks like a separate polygon group, right? Or different smoothing group, right? No, it's also one. What about this one? Oh, it's also one. They are actually all one, guys. So normally when using polygons, you have to use smoothing groups to get this. But when you import from CAD, it just looks like this, but it's an illusion. So to fix this, what you really have to do is to scroll down here. And instead of using smoothing groups, you want to use specified normals. Once you do this, it works fine. We can even try 50, although that may be too low. Actually, no, it's fine. All right. After this, you can either use creases or you can use good old support loops. But as you can see, you sometimes get this happening here. So many situations we can just use creases. But if you did want to use support loops, I'll show you how, just in case, just so you know. So it works well in many parts of the mesh right here. So we can just do this and this and that. All right. And even right here and right there. So we don't really need to have a loop going around here because we have these. So we can use Turbo Smooth. And there we go. All right, you notice we do get a little bit of curvature happening here. So actually it's a good idea to have a loop going there. So in order to fix that previous problem, what we can do is select what we want right here. All right, we're going to get this. All right, and we're going to simply connect and use the slide feature to slide it right here. Now we do have two end guns here. So we're simply going to cut here. I'm just going to collapse this. Now we'll select this and use loops build corner to get that. There we go. And that is how you would use support loops. So as you can see, guys, your topology works fine and you're even able to quickly add support loops if that's your preferred method of subdividing. It's also very easy to continue to model this. You may have to straighten a few vertices up here. But after you do, you can easily continue to extrude and do various other operations. All right, let's move on to this one. So we're looking at the polys. I'm using this kind of guide myself. What is a realistic expectation from the face counts? So once again, specify normals, not smoothing groups. All right, let's start with 2000. All right, got some strange things happening here. All right, if you're still getting this error right here, what we can try and do also is use subdivide. It still comes in handy even after CAD. All right, you notice how subdivide clears the smoothing groups, which means afterwards, it's a good idea to apply smooth. And let's try again. There we go. So after subdivide, we got a very good result. So as you can see, guys, subdivide also helps a lot with CAD models. And now it's no issue. Very nice, clean results. Taking that CAD mesh and giving us something very workable, subdividable and renderable inside of a Polygon program. All right. So I've showed you how to fix things. Let's just go through the rest of these four. Make sure everything works fine. Sometimes subdivide doesn't always give us the best results, but actually it's given us good results, just bad smoothing groups, which can be fixed using smooth. All 
All right, I'm going to try a different one. Let's try. Let's try variable curvature. All right. And then read topology after that. Actually, we need to apply smooth. And there we go. So if you get some sort of error that says I P O P T I popped error, this is the best way to, to fix it. Simply change your subdivide algorithm. Variable curvature can take the longest to calculate, but it does, as you can see, give the best results. So many times it's worth the wait. There we go, 250, no problemo. Although here, of course, we're greatly simplifying this curve right here, so maybe 250 may be too low. Probably want a few more edges here to better establish this curve right here for a better represent representation of the CAD model. There we go, no problem. In fact, at this point, we can just select these two modifiers and simply paste them on here. And there we go. So as you can see guys, no problems. Now, of course, these meshes are more simple. With more complex models, I always recommend splitting it up as much as you can. So if you have a whole spaceship, that might be a nightmare to work with. So be sure to split it up into more simple pieces. Then read topology becomes much more fun and intuitive to work with. And so once again, you can choose creases or support loops work very well as well because of how clean the retopology is. All right, thank you for watching and take care.